This is Jazz Night in America. I'm Christian McBride. Art is the most intense mode of individualism that the world has known. Oscar Wilde gave us that, Jim. When I think about that quote, I can't help but wonder whether Oscar had some kind of premonition about an artist, an individual, we know as John Zorro. For more than 40 years, he's been a prolific, provocative, and above all, independent creative force. A composer who pulls from all corners of the musical spectrum to shape his own world of sound. An alto saxophonist who combines the jazz language with game theory, chants, and other strategies. The bottom line, Zorn has never tried to fit into any category. And over the years, that fierce commitment to his own creative fire has made him a category unto himself. But the funny thing about Zorn, he may be the ultimate individualist, but I can personally tell you, he's also a generous collaborator. My composition process is very simple. I meet someone that I think is amazing, and we develop a friendship, and then I write music for them. I don't wait for a commission. I don't apply. I don't ask the government, please give me. I just write. I have a friend. I write for that friend. And then we get a performance happening. In this episode, we're going to hear some of those performances with John Zorn and friends, about a dozen of them, representing a range of styles. They convened for the 2022 Big Ears Festival, where Zorn brought eight different ensembles. It was a triumphant showcase for a musical iconoclast who has lately made a habit out of this sort of thing. Here's Zorn from an on-stage interview he gave at the festival. When I was younger, when I was like in my 30s, in your 40s, then you love being on the road. You take one band out and you play in 15 different cities. Now what I like to do as I'm getting older is I'll take 15 bands out and play in one city. For this hour, that city is Knoxville, Tennessee, which becomes a sonic utopia during big years. Zorn practically curated a mini festival of his own with all the groups he brought and with certain ideals in mind. There are four qualities that I look for, that I find in all great music. Honesty is number one. Imagination is number two. Craft is number three. And the fourth is catharsis. His saxophone factored in two of the groups in the fest, including the new Masada Quartet. Let's check them out. Here's Tharsis. From the 2022 Big Ears Festival, that was Tharsis, written by John Zorn and played here by the new Masada Quartet. Zorn on alto saxophone, Jorge Roder on bass, Kenny Wallison on drums, and Julian Lodge on guitar. Julian is one of the finest guitarists of his generation. He surprised a few folks when he linked up with Zorn. What they didn't realize is that Julian grew up with the deepest admiration of Zorn's artistry. John's music is a culture. I think it's always been a culture. You know, I come from a generation of music student who grew up studying, you know, being told, you know, check out Bebop, check out this, check out Ornett Coleman, check out Philip Evans, check out John Zorn. Just, you know, so in the pantheon of great pioneers and innovators, John's at the top, and he always has been. Julian first met his hero through another seemingly unlikely partner, singer-songwriter and guitarist Jesse Harris. Now, you've definitely heard some of Jesse's songs. Don't know why I didn't come. It so happens that Jesse Harris and John Zorn are longtime friends, and about a decade ago, they teamed up to write some songs together. Eventually, they connected with another great singer, Petra Hayden, to make songs for Petra on Zorn's label, Zodic. Here's one of those tunes performed to a capacity crowd at the Bijou Theater in Knoxville. This is Kafiristan. Kafiristan, from the group Songs for Petra. Petra Hayden on vocals, Jesse Harris on acoustic guitar, Jorge Roder on bass, and Kenny Wallison on drums. And you may have noticed the electric guitar solo on that tune by Julian Lodge. Lodge on John Zorn. 
the one thing that I think stands out with John's music is that, to me, it, it calls forth tremendous grace. You know, it calls to, to bear a, a deep intensity of conviction. Like, if you're going to do it, do it. You can hear the conviction in John Zorn's voice as he introduces another band from his curated residency at Big Ears, the Brian Marcella Trio. The High Priestess, composed by John Zorn for the Brian Marcella Trio. Marcella on piano, Trevor Dunn on bass, and Kenny Wallison on drums. After the break, we'll hear more of Zorn's music, and consider how he went from an upstart to an eminence, all on his own terms. This is Jazz Night in America. I'm Christian McBride. This is Jazz Night in America. I'm Christian McBride. We've been celebrating John Zorn at the Big Ears Festival. The festival's founder, Ashley Capps, has known the composer for more than 40 years. I think I first met John when he was working at the Soho Music Gallery, which was a super cool record store in Soho back in, this must have been, maybe it was the early 80s, but I think it might have been the late 70s. And he invited me to a show uh, in a basement where he was doing the, uh, you know, the solo saxophone and duck calls piece. Solo saxophone and duck calls? You heard that right. Ashley is referring to a legendary series of Zorn performance pieces, which drew on his interest in both the avant-garde and cartoon music. At the time, he was part of a rugged but thriving downtown scene in New York, making his art guerrilla style. Or in his apartment, he did this theater of musical optics thing. That's guitarist Bill Frizzell, who first met Zorn downtown in the early 80s. Turns off all the light and puts flashlight and it's a little miniature theater piece that he does. Frizzell quickly became one of Zorn's musical confidants, eventually joining a band called Naked City. Their style was informed by movie soundtracks, punk rock, and film noir, among other things. You can hear that in this 1990 tune with a confrontational title, You Will Be Shot. Around this time, Zorn started thinking about his Jewish heritage as a mooring and a source of meaning. He formed a group called Masada, with alto sax, trumpet, bass, and drums. The same format as the 1960s Ornette Coleman Quartet, which set the stage for free jazz. Then Zorn started writing music for Masada, and I mean a lot of music. It began with a hundred compositions, short pieces based on Jewish scales with titles in Hebrew. His Masada Quartet could make these tunes shimmy or explode, like a klezmer ornette. And as it gained worldwide acclaim, Zorn decided that the Masada Project held too much potential for just one band. Here's the Masada String Trio. Bar Kokhba. I've even gotten on some of the Masada action myself. Eventually, Zorn composed three books of Masada music, more than 600 tunes for a handful of ensembles. We heard the new Masada quartet at the top of the show. But even as he became the world's foremost purveyor of what he calls radical Jewish music, Zorn never stopped exploring other dimensions. Get this. He's a hero on the metal scene. He's collaborated with the drummer from Slayer and even formed his own metal bands like Painkiller, Moonchild, and Simulacrum. It's Zorn's heavy gauge version of an organ trio like the Tony Williams Lifetime. Buckle up. Don's Macabre, composed by John Zorn, performed at Big Ears by Simulacrum. 
guitarist Matt Hollenberg, drummer Kenny Grahowski, and organist John Medeski. These and other musicians in Zorn's orbit are always up for the challenge. These are master musicians. They're coming to me and they're returning to me because I'm, they know I'm going to freak them out. They know I'm going to give them something that maybe they thought they weren't able to do, but then they did it. Stephen Gosling is an award-winning classical pianist who picked up Zorn's gauntlet. The Turner Etudes is a recent suite of short, difficult pieces inspired by the sketchbook of 19th century English painter J.M.W. Turner. From the Bijou stage, here's number eight. That was pianist Stephen Gosling with a piece from John Zorn's The Turner Etudes. When we come back, John Zorn continues to push musicians to new heights live from the 2022 Big Ears Festival. This is Jazz Night in America. I'm Christian McBride. That was Egregor by Chaos Magic, with Brian Masella on Fender Rhodes, John Medeski on organ, Matt Hollenberg on guitar, and Kenny Grahowski on drums. Composed by John Zorn, who was on stage conducting all of those quick cuts in the music. At the Bijou Theater, it had the audience on the edge of their seats. But don't get it twisted. John Zorn. This is not entertainment. An entertainer is someone who gets on stage and dances their little dance, tells their little tale, sings their little song. They go off stage, and if the audience didn't like it, the, the answer is, well, I got to punch my act up. I need a couple of peacocks, you know? I got to bring out some dancing or whatever. An artist, they tell their little tale, and they go off stage, and the audience didn't like it. Well, fuck them. You know, there are no words on earth that are going to stop me from doing what I believe in. And I have been through some doors, as you know. I've been, you know, I have scar tissue on my soul from this shit. I've been a target for 40 years, you know, and but yeah. I know once I hit 70, then I'll be one of the old masters and I won't have to worry about it anymore. John Zorn turned 70 in 2023. Whether you consider him one of the old masters is your business. Zorn is only concerned with making his music his way. He's in perpetual research and development mode and always will be. Case in point, his group Heaven and Earth Magic has vibraphonist Sai Hashimoto and pianist Stephen Gosling playing strictly what's on the page, while bassist Jorge Roder and drummer Chess Smith set a rhythm foundation on the fly. Here's a taste from a piece called Casting the Runes. That was Heaven and Earth Magic with Casting the Runes. John Zorn hasn't lost the renegade spirit that used to get him called the bad boy of the downtown scene. But as he's operated on the outside, he's built his own scene. As we've heard this hour, it welcomes all kinds of musical minds, pushing them to the limit. It shouldn't surprise you to hear the other key ingredient, according to Zorn. There's a joyfulness in, in, in everything that I do, and it's just part of who I am. At Big Ears, nothing was more joyful than the grand finale by New Electric Masada, which brought together Zorn on alto saxophone, Bill Frizzell and Julian Lodge on guitars, John Medeski on organ, Brian Marcella on electric piano, Trevor Dunn on bass, Kenny Grohowski on percussion, and Chess Smith and Kenny Wallace on drums. You've heard all of these players already in this episode. Let's hear them now on Haita Aru. Jazz Night in America is a production of WBGO Studios, Jazz and Lincoln Center, and NPR Music. This week's episode was written by Nate Chinin and produced by Alex Arif, Nate Chinin, and Trevor Smith, who edited the show. Ron Scalzo and Katie Simon mixed the episode. The music was recorded by Matt Cowan and Matt Honkinen for Pitchwire. Mark Urselli did the live mix and the final music mixes for our show. Huge thanks to the Big Ears team. Ashley Capps, the executive and artistic director, their managing producer, Mary Ho, and while they are no longer with Big Ears, 
Aaron Greenwald, and Brian Crow. Shout out to the Bijou Theater crew in Knoxville, production manager Misha Goldman, and the executive director Courtney Bergmeyer. The Jazz Night team includes Sarah Giletti and Saraya Muhammad, our project manager. Keith Jenkins is the vice president of visuals and strategy at NPR Music. Executive producers are Gabrielle Armand and Anya Grunder. I'm Christian McBride.